Welcome to the Music Room. Today I'm going to be digging in the shelves for a special look, a tribute to the life and the music of Canadian singer Susan Jacks, who sadly passed away April 25th, 2022, at the age of 73, following a long battle with kidney disease. Susan first came to prominence in the late 1960s as lead singer of Vancouver-based group The Poppy Family from my part of Canada, Vancouver, BC. She was born Susan Pesklovitz of Ukrainian heritage in Saskatoon, Canada in 1948, moved to the small town of Haney, BC as a child, not that many miles from me as the crow flies, just kind of down the road, across the river, and a little bit over. Uh, developed a love of singing very early on, became known for her talent and charisma, uh, began performing with various local bands. By the age of 15, she was already appearing on a local television music show called Music Hop. Uh, while still in her teens again, she would form a short-lived group called The Eternal Triangle with Vancouver-based folk singer Tom Northcott and Howie Vickers, who would later join another Vancouver psychedelic rock group, The Collectors. So Susan beginning to be part of the Vancouver rock scene that also included acts like Mother Tucker's Yellow Duck, uh, Papa Bear's Medicine Show, and other groups like that as the wave of psychedelia started to permeate, permeate this part of the Pacific Northwest. However, it would be a fateful 1966 gig in the town of Hope, about 150 mile kilometers east of Vancouver, that would see her recruit a singer-songwriter by the name of Terry Jacks to accompany her in her performance. Uh, the two would soon form a personal and professional relationship. They would marry in 1967, Susan Pesklovitz adopting his surname to become Susan Jacks. Along the way, she would leave the Eternal Triangle and Together, her and Terry would form a group that they called the Poppy Family, uh, with the addition of Craig McCaw on guitars and eventually Indo-Canadian, classically trained Indo-Canadian Satwant Singh on tablas to give an Eastern and vaguely psychedelic sound. The group would uh, soon begin performing around Vancouver, become come again part of the Vancouver music scene. However, it would be a wistful 1969 single called Which Way You Going, Billy? that would really propel the group to international success. The song had been written by Terry Jacks uh, from a male point of view. It was originally to be called Which Way You Going, Buddy? Susan didn't like the sound of that, uh, thought the angle wasn't quite right, suggested a change of viewpoint in the song to a female point of view, which meant a change of name. While they were searching around for a name that would fit the lyric, she went through her various brother's names. She came from a large family, about eight siblings, I believe, uh, finally settling on the name of her brother, Billy. The song, Which Way You Going, Billy, with Susan's wistful, uh, yearning, uh, very clear, very pure and rich vocal, uh, which topped the charts in Canada, reached number two in America, just behind the Beatles' final single, The Long and Winding Road, also chart well in other countries around the world, becoming the first single to reach that level of success coming from Vancouver, Canada. The Poppy family had arrived, for many, that would be all they would know the Poppy family of. They're sometimes mischaracterized as one-hit wonders, but there was much more to their story than that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Poppy family. Which way are you going, Billy? The 
international success of Which Way You Going Billy soon led to the release of the debut album by the Poppy family, titled of course after that hit single, and featuring Susan Jack's front and center in cover photos, her natural beauty, charisma, making her a magnetic front person for the group. Uh, by all accounts, she was also a kind, warm-hearted person, unpretentious, uh, who was known to visit radio stations to thank the DJs for playing her music, and featuring Terry Jacks, Satwant Singh, and Craig McCaw in the lineup. There's also another cover version of this, which I believe later pressings held. I have a few copies of this album. As you can imagine, not that, uh, not that difficult to find around this area where the group enjoyed a lot of popularity. Even my mother-in-law has a copy in her basement with her old records. Not that I've been snooping. I have a couple of copies of this. This dispensing with the group entirely to just feature Susan on the cover, and this appeared on the London label. It's a black label version. And I also have a blue label version, both stereo copies. This was produced by Terry Jacks, uh, featured primarily his compositions. There are a couple of lead vocals by Terry on here, uh, beginning to develop into a strong songwriter and producer, uh, as well as wistful, romantic, folk-influenced ballads. You get the psychedelia of Free From The City with sitars and tablas, courtesy of Craig McCaw and Satwant Singh, giving a very Eastern flavor. The dreamy Beyond The Clouds, A Good Thing Lost, many rueful, uh, melancholy ballads from the pen of Terry Jacks, but also some eerier, uh, stranger, even sinister songs on here. There's no blood and bone with its shrieks and wails. Shadows on my wall, almost with a psychedelic doors feeling to it. Uh, Terry himself voicing of cities and escapes, quite experimental sounding. The Poppy family there in their early days. That was Lydia Purple, the collector's latest release. Lovely sort of voice sounds like chanting. The Poppy family, who have developed an Eastern influence, they call it Raga Rock, have a new record coming out too, Beyond the Clouds and Free from the City. Further hit singles for the Poppy family lifted from their debut album uh, would be Beyond the Clouds, Wistful, Melancholy, with its wonderful performance by Susan Jacks, That's Where I Went Wrong, 
what can the matter be? Many of these songs from the pen of Terry Jacks uh, showing a certain melancholy or rueful tone to them. The recriminatory Good Friends. 1971 would see the release of the second Poppy Family LP. By this time, the group had been reduced to the duo of Terry and Susan Jacks. Terry, again, uh, assuming production duties, writing most of the songs. However, he preferred to exert more creative control and utilize studio musicians, uh, which saw Craig McCaw and Satwant Singh leave the lineup. Poppy Seeds would appear in 1971. Again, just the duo of Terry and Susan, again on the London label. This would see uh, more of the Poppy family's uh, somewhat Everly Brothers inspired harmonies, a few country songs, including a cover of a Merle Haggard song, I Started Loving You Again. The rueful good friends on there, uh, sometimes characterized as one hit wonders. The Poppy family were anything but. The song Where Evil Grows from this album played heavily on Canadian radio here uh, on the oldie stations well into the 1980s and was featured in the recent Sonic the Hedgehog film, causing a resurgence of interest in the music of the Poppy family and Susan Jacks. Someone Must Have Jumped, a song about suicide, a very dark element to some of Terry Jacks's songwriting, as well as the more uh, sentimental uh, feelings expressed by Susan Jacks. Uh, somewhat of a, some of his songs, uh, something of a very dark, sinister flip side to her golden sunshine. But a lot of you out there don't recognize the names Susan and Terry Jacks. But if you happen to be one of the millions of people that have one of their hit records, I'm sure you'll recognize the Poppy family. would see debut solo albums by both Susan and Terry Jacks appear, Terry handling production of both of them, contributing some songs. Susan's I Thought of You Again would feature unusual use of the ARP synthesizer alongside her usual country and pop-tinged ballads would appear on the Goldfish Records label. Uh, however, cracks were beginning to appear in the marriage. Terry Jacks' song, You Don't Know What Love Is, written by him following an argument between the two, that phrase hurled at him by Susan. She would ultimately leave the marriage that year. The same year, his album Seasons in the Sun would appear, also on Goldfish Records. That song, of course, became a smash hit, uh, hitting the number one spot and becoming ubiquitous on rock radio for many years to come. Seasons in the Sun, Terry Jacks. He would go on to a solo career, including albums like You Don't Fight the Sea in 1975. Susan that year would release the Dream LP, again appearing, or appearing on the Casino label. This would see production by Craig or Claire Lawrence from The Collectors, which by then had evolved into Chilliwack and included the hit single Anna Marie, Susan Jacks. Susan's 1980 LP Ghosts would see Terry Jacks return as producer and appear on the Columbia label. 
Uh, however, by this point, she had remarried, uh, moved to Nashville, where she lived for many years, continued her interest in music, apparently also opened a Ukrainian restaurant, uh, raised a family, lived in Nashville, Tennessee for most of the 80s and 90s. Uh, in the early 2000s, her husband became ill with cancer. They returned to Vancouver to seek treatment. He would unfortunately pass away in 2005, and Susan would begin her own battle with kidney disease. Around 2009, 2010, she received a life-saving transplant with a donation from her brother Billy, who she had named that hit single, Which Way You Going, Billy, after all those years before. Uh, her health would rebound to some extent. Uh, she would begin working on music again. Uh, in 2014, she appeared alongside old friends Craig McCaw and Satwant Singh, as well as newer members of the rock scene, such as members of the New Pornographers at the 2014 Katsalano Festival in Kitsilano, Vancouver, uh, performing many of the old songs live again. However, following this, her, her health issues would return. She would spend periods hospitalized. Uh, that hit song, Which Way You Going, Billy, so popular at the time that it even inspired a reggae cover version by Hortense Ellis with a lyric changed to Which Way You Going, Natty. No doubt completely unauthorized. I mentioned that to Susan on the official Facebook page of the Poppy family at one point. She replied that she had heard the song, seemed amused by it, uh, continued uh, to struggle with her health in recent years, periods of hospitalization, particularly in 2021. However, she had made a post early in 2022 that she was feeling better, uh, was looking forward to a better year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that was not to be. Uh, she was apparently on the list for another kidney transplant when she passed away, uh, probably about 30 minutes away from where I sit right now. But her music will live on, uh, a part of Canadian music history. It's a, it's a funny thing, as record collectors, we are caretakers, both of these physical objects, as well as the, the history and the importance they contain to our lives. It's our duty to preserve and pass this on, and I hope I've done so today. Thank you for watching, everybody. Cheers.